the range one day And as he jogged along I heard him singing A most peculiar cowboy song It was a ditty He learned in the city A kumatai Kumatai yiptily I Get along Get him flip Doggies get along Better be on your way Get along Get hip little doggies And he trucked them on down The old fair way Singing his cow cow Boogie in the strangest way Come a die Come a die yip to lie Singing his cowboy song He's just too much He's got a knock Western accent with a Harlem touch. He was raised on local weed. He's what you call the swing half breed, singing his cow cow boogie in the strangest way. Come a die, come a die, you do There is truth in advertising, yes I swear, yes I swear Got new Nikes on my feet and beat out Sassoon in my hair I can sure use a Budweiser fruit of the loom underwear There is truth in advertising, I swear Why would they lie to me when they love what they sell? Plus we all know that the liars have a special fire in hell On the television, radio, and in the magazine The advertising got to perpetuate the American dream And let it be, let it be Now I know that I don't need to buy Everything to try to sell me But so easily divided Is a fool and his money There is truth in advertising Let it be Why would they lie to me When they love what they sell Plus we all know that the liars Got a special fire in hell On the television, radio And in the magazines The advertising got to let you When it comes right down to it, a number of mascots are simply anthropomorphized animals. This isn't shocking either. Anthropomorphization is a practice that's been around since humankind began. But it's weird how much more willing we seem to be to trust an animal than another human being to sell something to us, isn't it? Perhaps it's because we know people can lie, can cheat, can steal, and can generally be looking out for only themselves. Animals don't do that. At least, not our interpretation of animals. We've covered a number of animal mascots on this show. In fact, I'm willing to bet that the majority of mascots covered were some form of animal. Michigan J. Frog, McGruff, Spuds McKenzie, Smokey the Bear, the Taco Bell Chihuahua, Budweiser Frogs, and the Energizer Bunny, just to name a few. But you know what animal we haven't covered? The cow. Enter Elsie. Elsie the cow is a cartoon cow developed for the Borden Dairy Company in 1936 to symbolize the perfect dairy product. Unfortunately, Borden went under in the mid-90s, and since then the character has continued to be used in the same capacity for the company's successors, Eagle Family Foods and Borden Dairy, though her fame never really reached the same heights again. But that doesn't mean she's not famous, or wasn't. In 2000, Ad Age named her one of the top 10 advertising icons of the 20th century. And she's been among the most recognizable logos in both the US and Canada. Now here's the weird part. Although Elsie may have started out as an anthro cow, that isn't where she stopped. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. Elsie was created in 1936 by a team headed by advertising creative director, David William Reed. She first appeared as one of four cartoon cows, along with Mrs. Blossom, Bessie, and Clara, in a magazine advertisement series featured in medical journals. By 1939, however, she was featured in her very own advertisement campaign that wound up being voted best of the year by the jury of the 1939 annual advertising awards, something I simultaneously didn't know existed and am not at all shocked to learn does. 
Elsie even had a fictional cartoon mate, Elmer the Bull, who was created in 1940 and lent to Borden's then chemical division as the mascot for Elmer's products. The pair was given offspring, Beulah and Beauregard, in 1948, and twins Larrabee and Lobelia in 1957. This isn't just a mascot at this point, this is an entire fictional family. This is the goddamn Elsie the Cow cinematic universe. And while being a famous mascot, as popular as she was, would have been good enough, it apparently wasn't, because Borden took it to the next level in 1939, when the success of the character encouraged the company to promote a real-life version of Elsie, who became a celebrity in her own right, being more known than fictional characters like Mickey Mouse and even real-life celebrities such as Robert Taft, a candidate for president in 1952. She was noted as the most famous icon in the U.S., ranking even above the Marlboro Man and the Jolly Green Giant. She was a registered Jersey heifer, selected while participating in Borden's 1939 New York World's Fair Rotolactor exhibit, which demonstrated the company's invention, the Rotary Milking Parlor. Frankly, I think contests such as these are the only true way that we should pick our public icons. Presidents, celebrities, you name it, they should be picked at World's Fairs. It just cuts out all the bullshit. No pun intended. The cow chosen was born at Elm Hill Farm in Brookfield, Massachusetts, and named You'll Do, Lobelia, a name which not only gives some confusion to her own cartoon offspring down the line, but also sounds like the name of a racetrack horse. So Borden purchased her from the owners, family farmers from Connecticut, and she spent the rest of the season on display twice each day dressed in an embroidered green blanket. After the exhibit, she traveled the country in, yes, seriously, her own tour bus, making public appearances. Unfortunately, this story doesn't have a happy ending, because in 1941, she died after a traffic accident, which makes it sound more like Famous Cow was involved in 10-car pileup but was probably more like famous cow mowed down by semi-trailer. Because let's face it, cows don't drive. I don't care what Richard Scarry says. And while all of this is needless to say weird in its own right, perhaps even weirder is how in 1944, another live action Elsie was on a cross country tour via airplane to sell war bonds. The plane in question was a specifically outfitted DC-3 that had not just a pen for Elsie, but also a crate for Beulah, her young calf. The attraction devised by Borden was such a hit, it raised $10 million in bonds for the U.S. war effort. For God's sakes, even five-star Admiral Chester W. Nimitz, then commander of the U.S. Navy Pacific Fleet, showed up to meet the cow. He waited 20 goddamn minutes to meet her. A cow! After Lobelia's death in 41, 49 other Jersey cows were selected over a period of two years to be the living embodiment of Elsie. And even with Borden's eventual dissolvement in the 1990s, Elsie remains the mascot for the products sold by Dairy Farmers of America, a cooperative of 15,000 dairy farms in 48 states. Elsie isn't just a mascot. She's a trusted brand for farming as a whole, and frankly, in this day and age, I think that's a pretty important role to have. While Lobelia was laid to rest on the Gordon Walker farm, a tombstone still standing nearby with the epitaph, one of the great Elsies of our time, the spirit and overall character continues to live on and thrive. Elsie appeared in 107 countries, appeared in feature films, raised $10 million in war bonds during World War II, and even received not just several tongue-in-cheek honorary college degrees, but even received the key to over 200 cities. So sure, she may no longer be the icon she once was, and sure, she may not even really register as a recognizable face in this day and age to current generations, but she's still out there, giving her all, milking it for all it's worth. And that time, the pun was intended. David William Reed, the lead member of the team who created Elsie, died in December of 2003 at the age of 86. Reed not only created Elsie, but also her husband, Elmer, who represented Elmer's glue. And he was also not only a major figure in marketing history, but also a decorated World War II bomber pilot himself, receiving the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Purple Heart, and the Air Medal, 
with 11 oak leaf clusters. I'm talking about Reed here, not Elmer. Reed is perhaps one of the more fascinating men focused in on this show, primarily because of his odd attachment to his creation. You truly get the feeling he saw Elsie as a piece of himself and was proud of her. In fact, his B-26 bomber's nose was decorated with a picture of Elsie. And really, isn't it just rightly American to have a cow to thank for our freedom? That just feels so on brand for us, really. Advertising is a hell of a drug. Another barnyard celebrity arrives in style in her own custom Cadillac. Elsie the cow has been making personal appearances to promote Borden milk for over 60 years and is still a hit with her fans. At first they're curious and then so many of them go, oh my gosh, it's Elsie. It's Elsie the cow. I cannot believe this. You know, they're so excited. And then they see little Beauregard and it's like they're seeing an old friend like they're seeing someone that they remember from their past or that they see at their school every day on their lunch tray. Elsie's appearances, like the one at the State Fair, have helped her and Borden stay in the public eye for decades. She's the 10th most recognized advertising icon of the century. And that's a pretty, I think, a pretty uh, exclusive thing to be able to say, especially in our days of huge, huge logos and uh, things that people remember, but she is the one thing people seem to remember about Borden products, and that is Elsie the cow. This bovine royalty teaches fair visitors a new meaning for the term Dairy Queen. One dark late night a couple seasons ago, when the grass was just turning green, the fireflies were blinking and the flies were buzzing, yeah, we too were feeling serene. Well, I'm mosing on over to Elsie. She was one of my favorite cows. I said, how are you young crippled Billy? I said, son, how are you now? Elsie the cow, Elsie the cow, why'd you have to go down? Elsie the cow, Elsie the cow, why'd you have to go down? Elsie the cow, Elsie the cow, why'd you have to go down? Elsie the cow, Elsie the cow, oh, you went willingly.